Good evening, buenas noches, and thank you for tuning in tonight. On behalf of Mitchell Kaplan, Miami Book Fair, and all of us at Books and Books, I welcome you to a virtual evening with Maureen Seaton, Holly Iglesias, Carolina Hospital, and Nicole Hospital Medina in celebration of their new poetry collaboration, Myth America, published by Ahinga Press. Tres Abuelas y Una Mamá, as they call themselves, will discuss how together once a week for two years, they tackled old and new ways of poetic experimentation through shared lines or shared themes, sonnets, pantoums, triptychs, and high buns. Their compilation takes on historic domestic and civic violence, mental health, and feminism. These masterful poems are political and existential, as well as intimate and spiritual in an age of growing discourse. This book's trans transcendental force lies in its banded energy. Now let's meet the presenters. Maureen Seaton has authored many poetry collections, both solo and collaborative. Most recently, Sweet World, which went on to win the Florida Book Award for Poetry. Her awards include the Lambda Literary Award, an NEA, and the Pushcart. A memoir, Sex Talks to Girls, also garnered a Lammy. With Neil de la Flor, she co-edited Reading Queer, Poetry in a Time of Chaos. Holly Iglesias' work includes three collections of poetry, Sleeping Things, Angles of Approach, and Souvenirs of a Shrunken World, and a critical work, Boxing Inside the Box, Women's Prose Poetry. She has translated the work of Cuban poets Caridad Atencio and Nicolás Padrón. She has been awarded fellowships by the NEA, the North Carolina Arts Council, the Edward Albee Foundation, and the Massachusetts Cultural Council. Carolina Hospital is the author of the poetry collections Key West Nights and Other Aftershocks and The Child of Exile, a Poetry Memoir the novel, A Little Love, under the pen name C.C. Medina, and No Excuses, A Brief Survival Guide to Freshman Composition. She edited Los Atrevidos, Cuban American Writers, and A Century of Cuban Writers in Florida. Her work has appeared in numerous national publications, such as the Norton Anthology of Latino Literature and Bedford St. Martin's Florida Literature. Nicole, Hospital Medina earned her MFA at the University of Miami, where she now instructs writing. Her poems appear in the anthologies, Poems from the Lockdown, Feminine Rising, Voices of Power and Invisibility, Women Write Resistance, Poets Resist Gender Violence, as well as in Cura, a journal of art and action, the Miami Herald, Paper Nautilus, the Acentos Review, Canyon Voices, and more. She's the winner of the 2011 Miami Herald O oh Miami Haiku Contest. Also a visual artist, her paintings have been featured in Linden Lane Magazine. Throughout this evening's broadcast, you're invited to ask questions by clicking the Ask a Question button at the bottom of the screen, and we'll get to those right after the talk. You can find Mythic America and any other book you might need for purchase at Books and Books below by pressing the green button. Every purchase you make helps keep Books and Books up and running. So we thank you and press the green button. And now, without further ado, I'd like to bring all of our guests to the screen. <laughs> hey. Hello. Hi. Hi. Here we are. Uh, our oh first, goodness. we're going to jump right in with our first poem. <laughs> we're going to read the title poem, Myth America. First grade ritual, the daily rosary. She runs hard and skips until the fall. Bloody scrape rather than taking a knee. Am I alone here? <laughs> Down the hall. Should we keep going? Nicole, you're next. 
sitting. What down happened? We changed the order. Is what happened. My bad. <laughs> Chris, what what happened? Happened? Go what ahead. What Let's do all four of you reading. Okay. Let's start. Let's start over. Okay. Okay. So Let's it'll see. be Carolina, Nicole, Holly, Maureen, and Carolina. Right. That's the order. I have. Oh, we're all reading at one time. Is it line at a time or stanza? No, stanza, stanza. Ah. <laughs> Yes, that's how it is. Wow. Okay. okay. We're going to try again, guys. No. Right. No. Myth America. Gotta love us. First grade ritual, the daily rosary. She runs hard and skips until the fall. Bloody scrape rather than taking a knee. She remembers the boy being forced to crawl across the field while his papa looked away and her knee stinging down the hall. She leans in, her silk sleeve against his cheek as he in fealty, her champion, her swain, lowers himself, back bent, demeanor, weak. She thinks, kill me now, and hops a train to a land where no one's heard of chivalry or helplessness, two sides of a fake coin. On the gridiron, he kneels not to pray, but to jolt a nation long asleep. She ascends without a stumble, leaps and slays. Okay, so welcome everybody. Maureen, now you can get excited, say hello. Woohoo! Hi everybody. Hi. <laughs> so um, we wanted to thank all of you for being here. And in the name of all of us, we wanted to give some special thanks to Christina Nosti, of course, who sets this up and works very hard and Mitchell Kaplan from Books and Books for doing these daily readings. Um, also, we want to thank the directors of um, Anhinga Press who published the book, Christine Snodgrass especially, and Lynn Knight. She, she's the great um, designer of the book. And then of course to Nicole for providing her beautiful painting, which is the cover of the book. So thank you so much. So as you, as you heard, and thank you all for being here with us and bearing with us with the technology. We're doing our best here. <laughs> so some of the poems we wrote collaboratively, as you heard, the Myth America, the title poem. But there were other poems that we wrote individually, solo. Some of them um, around a particular theme, others around a project like a triptych, other times um, around a, a, uh, a time period. And then the book is divided in sections and each section is open with a, a line that opens it. And so the section, now we're gonna read individual solos from a section that opens with the line that reads, the highway is paved in summer. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna start. From Shore Strands. A nightmare startles me awake way before dawn. I walk towards the shore, a slight chill still in early May air. The sand trail across the dune edged by beach sunflowers and morning glory vines gives way to a silvered horizon. The sun is stretching behind a row of clouds. In time, it erupts into a flaming globe, blazing a thin path of light over the surf straight at me. The waves crash loudly against the sin and my thoughts. Quiet at last. And now Holly will read. This poem was inspired by um, a line in one of Maureen's poems. The title is, Maureen no more sends her poem than the chairman of the board chimes in. I'm seven, the age of reason. Hoping to find a girl like me, she writes. Then up pops Frank in D minor, about 17 being a very good year, and 21, and 35, as were all the girls to be had in all those years. And then Bobby Goldsboro begins to croon Blue Autumn, which I used to play repeatedly because it helped me to feel what I couldn't yet feel, to know what I didn't yet know, far from home, pouring over to Tocqueville at my desk, my roommate writing a letter to her boyfriend in Jacksonville while drying her hair. The bonnet of the dryer inflated, blowing hot and loud, 
her pink nail pinky dabbing wind song cologne onto each sheet of powder blue stationery. 18, the age of treason, in hell before I even learned how to sin. Soon enough, I would be in bell bottoms slung low on my hips, patchouli scented hair uncombed, and soon fleeing the country with a guy with no papers, and soon pregnant, and soon too far away to afford the phone call. And now Maureen. This poem um, is my Missing Florida Terribly poem. And I wrote it on the west coast of Florida, but it certainly pertains to both. It's called Turtling. She will walk along the trough that lines the surf at low tide, watching for history. Turtles nest from May through July and come to shore four to six times to lay eggs, an average of a hundred at a time. She will record the sound of the sea in her mind for later use. Most common, loggerheads, 300 to 400 pounds. Very rare, green turtles, 500 to 600 pounds. Rarer still, leatherbacks, six to seven feet long. She will include herself in the ancient sound. When she breathes, the water inside her will rise and fall. Every 10th nest is verified and triangulated. Volunteers dig for the eggs, verify the nest, and stake it off. The nest will be followed and excavated. She will count the seconds between waves and she will inhabit the waves themselves like a jellyfish or a surfer. They say the reason the sand turned black is because it is filled with fossils from the Pleistocene. When the sea comes close, she will remember the recent dead and the dead of millions of years past. Fewer than one in 1,000 turtles survive to reproduce in 25 or 50 years. One time, a turtle that had been tagged on the Gulf Coast showed up on the Atlantic Coast. The reverse of her, she thinks. People who walk along the shore at dusk look like fossils themselves in silhouette, strolling north and south. She will enter the Gulf of Mexico head first. Her flippers will work perfectly. And next we have Nicole. Incredible. <laughs> Thank you, Maureen. Okay, this poem is inspired by my life. <laughs> okay called The Behavioral Health Building. One, to get to the Behavioral Health Building located on the medical campus, take the Metro Rail to the Civic Center stop. Make sure it's very hot. You need to be sweaty, wishing you packed a water bottle. Then, navigate through the homeless people and disappointed activists around the garage, through the traffic of serious doctors and medical students, until you reach a refreshing fountain and a lush banyan tree. Scurry past three white work vans until you see graduate students drinking coffee. You should definitely feel awkward and wonder why you're more comfortable around the homeless people and activists than the professionals. Put your hair behind your ears nervously while you hurry. Arrive at a busy street. You have to press a crosswalk button and wait. It's excruciatingly summer. Someone in scrubs will cross with you. Now you better get your license ready because they're going to ask you for it and make sure your mace is deep inside your purse so they might miss it when they search your bag. Take a shortcut through the hedge. Notice the big automatic doors. Feel the AC when they open. Feel the AC when they open. Enter. Walk up to the counter. Are you here for an appointment? Yes. You should be embarrassed that you're here for an appointment. You're here because you need to be, because you're a patient. License, please, pose for the camera. Yes, they take your picture, print it out on a sticker that you have to wear until you leave. Then you go through the metal detector. Then someone in black with a stick looks through your purse, finds your mace, and shakes his head at you. You know this is considered a weapon. 
think, ah, oh, gee, nine out of 10 times, no one finds the stupid thing. You can't enter the building with this. Well, you know how it is walking around downtown, you offer. Take the weapon outside, throw it in the bushes, remember to pick it up later. You've done this before. Finally, they'll let you in so you can go up the elevator to the icy third floor, past the all gender bathrooms and into suite 3308. Two, I hide rainbows under June's mattress. Three, you need to take more time for yourself. Ask others for help, physical activity, psychotherapy. I don't wanna put you on any more medication right now, especially now that you're trying, perhaps during the second trimester, hypothetically speaking. But my anxiety is so bad. Four, that's me with the thin hair, aviators and restless jeans, leaving the behavioral health building, the behavioral health building, the behavioral health building. That's me swerving through the other crazies, melting at the civic center stop. If I didn't have healthcare, would I dissolve into the sidewalk? Would I stroll to the park for a specific tree? Five, only a rainbow could stop it. Thank you. That was beautiful, Nicole. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so this next poem, after that powerful poem by Nicole, um, is our first collaboration, the four of us writing a poem together. It's called America's Rifle. And we have Chris Green and the Poetic Justice League to thank for having put out a call for submissions for an anthology called Semi-Automatic Pantooms, a collaboration on gun violence. Um, a pantoum is a repetitive, kind of obsessive form that the lines keep repeating in different order and they show up in different places. And one of the things that we were thinking about was the fact that with that constant return, there's this echo of perhaps what a semi-automatic weapon sounds like. So this is America's Rifle and the epigraph is by Ocean Vuong. Gunfire is only the sound of people trying to live a little longer and failing. Exit wound, point of departure for the body shot through. Rainbow colored shards shift the center of gravity. No one is wiser, no one alive to claim the win. Accurate and lightweight, it's America's rifle. Rainbow colored shards shift the center of gravity. Observe the shape of fear, profile sleek, matte black. Accurate and lightweight, it's America's rifle. Proud protector at the ready at each and every corner. Observe the shape of fear, profile sleek, matte black. Loaded cartridge with wasted virtue. Prod protector at the ready at each and every corner. Ear splitting discharge and smoke screens for hidden angels. Loaded cartridge with wasted virtue. How cocksure your anticipation. How red blooded your ear splitting discharge and smoke screens for hidden angels. What will happen when every angel is armed? How cocksure your anticipation, how red-blooded your authority. The camera is a sky. What will happen when every angel is armed? What will happen when the sound cuts off? Authority. The camera is a, is a sky. No one wiser, no one alive to claim the win. What will happen when the sound cuts off? Exit wound, point of departure for the body shot through. And now Carolina. Yes, thank you. So we need to take a breath after that one. So this <gasps> next, now for this next section, we're going to again read individual poems. And these four poems come from a section that is preceded by the line, prayer is a precarious link. And I will start with mine. Good Friday with Maureen and Holly. Mother always warned us about los vientos de cuaresma, the Lenten gray winds that forced us to stay home and avoid meat. 
Today, I avoid beef for health reasons, and Good Friday sounds loud under this bright blue haze. The young boys kayaking and their father's guttural chatter under the coconut trees resonate like a cliche. But the squawk of the black crow on top of the flagpole reminds me nothing is predictable, not even resurrection. And now mm. Holly. Mm. Wonderful. Um, this poem takes its title from a work by a mystic in the British Isles in the late 14th century. It was written in the in Middle English. Um, and as a person who's a, learned to be, I'm a Spanish speaker, but I'm a native English speaker, I become very aware of how um, short and clipped and practical English words are. So I tried to use just Anglo-Saxon words in this. From the cloud of unknowing, God bless us each and all, draining of dreams as we rise and pull on pants and shirts to face the day. Spring to fall do we tread the earth, dig for food and eat it. All the while the soul soaring, riding the wind to the rim of a nest to gaze down on our work. Ah, dear friends, may our deeds, as do our prayers, pierce heaven. And now, Nicole. Thanks. Thank you, Holly. Okay. This poem is called Cream. This is me on the floor, painting like clouds, lively. Each canvas downpours three colors like God. Peach, seafoam green, seafoam green. This is me on the bed, melting like ice cream, slowly. Everything must be measured. Everything must be glamorous. The polish is buttery on peaches. Seafoam coverlet, seafoam lace. This is me in the ocean. Jellyfish, starfish, plop of seafoam on slurping coasts. Everyone else motorboats, booms, hacks up the sea. Me, three colors like God make me decide on my tragedy. This is me on the floor, painting like clouds, lively, churning sea foam frothy, splashing spots, cream and calm. The paint is always sticky, the paint contained in edge. <clears throat> Maureen. <laughs> Thanks, Nicole, that was beautiful. Um, I was trying to decide whether to read this as a high bun, which is the way that I wrote it, or to use the haiku at the bottom as an epigraph. And I was going to do that, but I think I'm going to read it as a high bun. But I can't look at my other poets and ask them if that's a good idea, so I'm just going to do it. Prayer for All Souls Day. Because I'm never satisfied with the end of anything, because all the ways to die are so unappealing and my body has chosen a violent one. And the tiny green lizard who fell into my house on Sunday is shriveled as a necklace beside the lamp that Carolina and Carlos gave me. And I cried and cried because nothing could have saved his swift little butt. This day has been a solemn one. Completely and solemnly a day to walk through slowly or sit beside the flame trees, shading the deep grass that sucks my feet up to the ankles, then spits me back to Miami. It's good to love this way. Among all the terrified people, we have each other. When I'm old, I will drive my Mustang up and down the Palmetto. I will not signal a lane change, and I will fly free as an ibis before a hurricane. I will run for Congress like Donna Shalala. Save the country, save the country, save the people now. Laura Nero. Thank you. 
Okay, so now we're gonna come back together um, with our final poem, which is actually, oh my God, let me fix my hair, guys. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna come together, <laughs> we're gonna come together um, for our final poem, which is actually the first poem of the book, but we're gonna read it as the last poem of the reading. Um, and it was inspired uh, by the title of a book by Jorge Canizares Esguerra. So the title of his book inspired the poem. And this uh, poem is a collaboration. Should I say that we are gonna be reading our own parts? Sure. Yeah, in yeah. this one, which we didn't in the yeah. other collaborations, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, one. The history of the new world is an opal, a foundling, a failed Netflix special. Close your eyes and pick up your pen. Two, write down everybody you've ever known whose name begins with a letter of the alphabet. Three, any alphabet. Four. I believed the lie of the new world until I arrived at my Latin American art history, literature, anthropology classes at UF. Each slide of Chichen Itza, Teotihuacan, or Tulum, each photograph of ancient Aztec or Inca artifacts set my head spinning in these pre-Columbian civilizations with their mathematical and astronomical designs. Such startling mysteries in the mountains and valleys of Yucatan or Peru. Yesterday, I asked my Peruvian student if she had traveled to Machu Picchu. She looked at me dismayed as she answered, never. I suppose it's like expecting every American to have visited the Grand Canyon or the adobe houses of New Mexico. Our new world is an old world. Our survival depends on its old ways. Physical books can be reduced to ashes, but not destroyed if we remember the words. And no one can monitor what we read or with whom we share them. Paper lettered by scribes is art, not just a certificate printed at the end of El Camino de Santiago de Compostela, where pilgrims sit waiting for hours, watching the screen until their number pops up and they are done. Five. When the history of the new world creeps into your dreams and threatens to poke you awake, curl tighter into yourself like a spiral. Your dream sequence will look like this. 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, infinity. Oh, six, consider the word new and fear there is no such thing, that you will have to completely create a new world yourself and realize you don't have enough years left to do it justice. Seven, to write the history of the new world, return from whence you came, that place where there was only one world, this one. Find comfort there, shed your wanderlust and winters of discontent and shabby profit motives. Bear up, carry those loads to which you were born. And then, should the appetite for voyage and plunder persist, venture out, first learning the 40 master words of Quechua, forcing strange sounds from your mouth, your fingers reading knots, discerning one thread from another. Leave your brittle maps and instruments of navigation. Leave your well-worn boots and breeches on board. Then dive into the warm waters, waters more blue, more green than you've ever known. Float in those waters, belly up, smiling at the sun that blesses you, the wind that caresses you. Roll in with the tide toward the shore where men and women, children and crones wait, astonished as you. Stand up, walk toward them, receive their welcome, eat their fruits, extend your hand. Praise whatever God you find here that you are alive and wet as a newborn babe. Eight. Now look at your friends writing how to write the history of the new world beside you and see how they barely move a muscle, yet the light surrounding them winks and flickers. Take this to mean that everything is new. Ask them to collaborate with you on the meaning of the word world. Write quietly. 
Your grandchildren are asleep in the next room. The tea is almost steeped. Nine, let the girl swim in Lake Okeechobee. Tighten those strings around your fingers and wonder who stands behind Jesus in the painting. Who is Jesus anyway? Ask the students for concrete evidence. Ask an electrical outlet how it feels. Seven is not an unsavory number. Rearrange the Caribbean. Turn off the television. All the dogs are barking and you're free to listen. The end. The end. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for listening you. and coping with the technology. Christina, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> I just heard her. No, <laughs> oh, you did it. Yeah. And and, oh, and thank you for those nice comments. I've been reading the comments on the chat. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you, everybody. You're, you're very generous. Very. So glad you're here. Nicole, are there any, any questions? Um, I don't know. No. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions? You can use this amazing ask a question feature. Um, it's at the bottom rights of the screen if anyone has questions about process or we could also do something really crazy and if anybody actually wanted to come on the screen oh, yeah we could bring them oh my god really yeah if I've they never... allow us to they would have to say <laughs> okay i want to go on screen this is who i am and then i can find them and bring them on oh. but and here's or... a question right here that would be amazing. Chat, that would be so amazing. Yeah, cool. yeah. Or if you're shy, if you're sh you could just type it up and Nicole will read it, right? And one of us will read mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Can we pick people we'd like to see that we haven't seen in about 15, <laughs> 20 years? You totally can, as long as they're okay with my bringing them onto the screen. Because <laughs> maybe they're in pajamas or, or eating dinner. Yeah. I don't necessarily want to be here, but okay, I will absolutely if you give me permission, I'll bring them. <laughs> but in the meantime, <laughs> anybody put a question? Nobody have a question? Yeah, there's one there. I have a question. What is it? I can't How easy it. or challenging right. was it to write poetry together? Oh, oh, it was a breeze. <laughs> it, was, it was fun. It was challenging, but it was fun. It was hard work. <laughs> it was cool. We I like, feel, to be friends. Go ahead, Nicole. Oh, no, I, I feel like, um, like there was like a different energy behind it. Like I knew other people were there and, and it like pushed me kind of. I wanted to push. I wanted to challenge myself and keep up with the poets I was working with. So... I mean, I, I guess it's more difficult in that sense and that it was more like like more pressure, I guess, but it also made it more exciting. Yeah, well, I want to thank especially Maureen and for starting off the whole workshop concept and the collaboration. And then Holly came aboard and, and all of us then ended up together like right now for over two years. But I mean, Maureen has been doing it forever. And um, mm -hmm. the four of us for over two years, to me has been like a lifesaver, especially this last six, seven months that have been so hard. Because we really do, like Nicole says, it's like we look forward to working together, even though it's a challenge. Yeah. We really, uh, um, I don't know, writing is a, such a solo endeavor. So I, I'm a very social person, those of you that know me. So it's hard for me, to, it's kind of ironic that I like to write, but I like to be with people. So this is kind of a way that I bridge you know, that aspect. So it's exciting to have people that will be forced to hear what I write right away. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I see a question from Denise. Do you see that, Nicole, in the in the um, chat? I see, I see uh, quite a few questions. In, um, this one's right in the chat. How did you decide which solo poems to include? Hmm. How did well, we decide? Well, the Hi, solo poems. <laughs> the, the solo poems were were like not random solo poems like the solo poems were like one sometimes we did triptychs and we each did solo triptychs or we decided to do prayer type poems so then we included the prayer poems so it wasn't like we just randomly put them they all were connected 
either through a project or a, a, a moment like summer or a theme. Yeah, right? yeah, like a theme, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so it was like the way that we figured it out was like what what was the theme and then we just put those in basically. Yeah. One answer, this one has four upvotes um, from Books and Books. I would like to know the difference between a high bun and a pantoon. They put pontoon, <laughs> but I think they meant pantoon. <laughs> Maureen, Maureen, you take yeah, Maureen, that one. you got that one, yeah. Oh yeah, you're always blaming me for form. She always makes us, she pushes us. Visual Push aid. Down. Visual this aid, is, yeah. This is, can you see it? This is a high bun. It's like, it's a Japanese form that Americans have taken and somewhat, somewhat similar, have kept it somewhat similar. Um, but it's a prose piece on top. It used to be a travel piece on top and then a haiku at the bottom. That's a high bun. They're really fun, really fun. Yeah. And then the pantoum is a little harder to see. Pantoum just repeats lines in every stanza from the stanza before. So it, it, go, it kind of goes over and over and over again. It's, it's in fun. stanzas, yeah. Yeah, it looks okay. like this. Mm. There's like an echoey feeling to it when you read it, it feels echoey. Yeah, right? Um, okay, and then another question with a lot of upvotes from Sonora Hospital Medina, my sister. Um, good question, Sonora. When you worked on the collaborative poems, did you write them together in person or on your own and then bring them together later? Oh, good, good question. question. <laughs> both. Both. Yeah, yeah. Both. both. Yeah. Especially at, like at the beginning, the first year, we were together physically a lot. So we would write right then and there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then other times we gave each other homework, right? And then we'd come to write back. a stanza or to write a couplet and then bring it together. Yeah. Yeah, we recently tried Google Docs and it didn't work very well. <laughs> <laughs> we have we have to perfect that one. I'm not sure. I think we can do it. We just have to try again, I think. Yes, we do. We I, have we do. I think anyway. that I had to be dragged screaming because I have primarily written prose poems for the last 25 years. So the idea of writing in lines. Oh yeah. It's not easy for me. <laughs> and rhyming and matching and me. I just like a big chunk of stuff. So I was very stretched and then well supported in doing yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And now, well, so, but all of us now write more prose mm -hmm. poems we, too. Yeah, we mm -hmm. write more prose mm -hmm. poems. And then if we say to, that the prompt for next week is couplets, Holly doesn't go, ah, <laughs> she used to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now she's like, now you're okay with that, right? Yeah, or I just don't, don't do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true, she doesn't do it. She, she, she rebels, she Sometimes has a mutant. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, okay, I'm not the question. only mutiner. No. There have been other mutiners. <gasps> yeah. Of course. Okay, we have another question with a lot of upvotes from Andreas and Cree. Andre, hi, Andreas and Cree. Hi. Um, a great question. How do you decide when a poem is finished? Gulp. How do you answer that? <laughs> when, do you decide? When, when, when everyone doesn't have any more comments to make, especially Maureen. <laughs> <laughs> You're picking on me again. <laughs> I guess, well, yeah. yeah. We ahead. sit together. We sit together and we give each other feedback. If it's a solo mm -hmm. poem, then I guess the individual person decides. Mm -hmm. But if it's a collaborative poem, we all just keep giving ideas and we banter back and forth. Yeah, and sometimes like three out of the four will be like, it's done. And then the fourth will be like, it's not done. And then we have to sit there and figure out, okay, let's go ahead and do it again. And then figure out when is it done. And you know I, who's that? You know who that fourth person is? That's not true. She's, uh, I just want you all to know she's the Virgo. The one <laughs> saying that I'm picky. No, I'm no, the Libra. No, no, no. I am not. That's funny you said that because Stephanie just weighed in and says, Holly is such an Aries. <laughs> <laughs> You're a Virgo. And Cassandra is asking if we edit one another's poems. We, we do help each other, yes. Yeah. It's part yeah. of the workshop, like we'll write together yeah. and then we'll bring in poems and share and give each other feedback. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah wonder it's, it's wonderful to do. We that. love that part. Yeah. Yeah. I would call it feedback, not editing. No. Yeah. Feedback. Right. Editing, yeah. yeah. It's yeah, so interesting I mean, to have these different people and different sensibilities weighing in because, because each of us, each of us 
see something different. And now yeah. I'm echoing. Can you hear that? Okay, yeah. Are you? Yeah. I can't hear the echo, just so you know. What? 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 I can't. <laughs> Uh-oh. Holly. Wait a minute. Holly. A question from Maria. Okay. Okay. A question from Maria Elena, yeah. yeah. In the group chat. Hi, Maria Elena. Hi, Maria Elena. Texas, right? From Brownsville, Texas. Okay, did a lot of content end up on the cutting room floor? Hmm. No, the, Google, so the Google Doc. The Google oh, Doc. Yeah. Just, the <laughs> Google I, would say, Doc. I would say some, but we're pretty stubborn. Like, we kept working at it. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. The hardest was that last line that ended with slay. Oh, yeah. Remember oh, yeah. And yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. oh my God. Was, it was. Do you, do you think that was the hardest one, Myth yes. America? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Ironic, ironically, it becomes the title of the book. Oh, somebody yeah. had a question about the title, so we could talk about that. Okay. It's, yeah. from, the, it's from that Who doesn't poem. want to say Myth America? You know, he's like, I've got a new book out, Myth America. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, she's got a test or something. Yeah. Well, I'll, I, never hear, I'll never hear the end of it from my partner, who is in <laughs> the audience laughing right I now, her. I know. I saw her. She's laughing. Myth America. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Oh, here's the thing about that poem. That's one of the poems that was on the floor. Yeah. And yeah. I oh, kept, yeah. I kept bringing it. And a couple of, a couple, some of the people would say, oh no, that poem's beyond repair. But I kept saying, no, don't give up on it. Let's keep doing it. And then yeah. I, think, I, think, I think the title with Holly came up with is kind of saved the poem. I think it kind of gave it a new life. And we fell yeah. in love with it again with that title. Okay, another question from Carlos Rodriguez. What are your creative processes like? Lent. I'm a Libra. She's a Virgo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Leo. And Nicole's a Leo. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm a, I don't know. I, all I'm going to say is I'm a slow writer. Like I write and then I clean and clean and write and clean. I don't know if that's a creative process, but. I, I think I'm the opposite of you. Like I like to settle down for a couple hours in a place with like a candle or something and some music and write something and then like look at it a couple days later. And like, yeah, just, that's how it usually works for me. <laughs> I write really fast. I waited a long time to be able to take my writing seriously and didn't really do it until I was in my late 40s. So it was like I'd been writing in my head for 30 years. And that once I knew that prose poems were a thing, you could just lay these chunks down. It's like I could do that all day. Laying bricks. Laying bricks, yeah. <laughs> a variation on laying the golden egg. Laying the brick. <laughs> laying the brick. Well, I can say that since COVID started, I've done nothing but collaborate. And of course, my collaborator mm -hmm. par excellence forever and ever is in the audience, Denise Duhamel. And we wrote a whole book. We wrote a whole book in what, three months, Denise, something like that. And um, so that's the only thing I've been able really to do very happily during COVID. And I'm collaborating with Neil De La Flor and Sam Ace and these poets who I see every single week, and it's been been great. Collaboration is so such a lifesaver for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Another question from Lourdes Rodriguez. Is this the Lourdes I'm thinking? <laughs> yeah, hi, Lourdes. Um, is there a leader among you, or do you take turns leading? Oh, gosh. Uh, yeah. Lourdes. We're all Nicole is our leader. leader. I mean, Isn't Nicole our leader? Really? Well, Nicole, Nicole is our prompter. Nicole's, I would say Maureen is our leader, but no. Nicole's our, I don't I'm know. I've in a lot of ways too, because you like organizing it and everything. Yeah, I'm the Virgo leader. I'm the organization. <laughs> we all have different leadership roles. Holly's the yeah. leader of rebellion. Rebellion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she wanted to do that so badly. She did it. Yay. Holly, Holly the subversive <laughs> one. Yeah. <laughs> And Maureen's a spiritual leader. <laughs> I yeah. don't know. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I would say really? that. That's kind of. Okay. Well. Okay. Okay. Uh, but yeah, no, I think that we all like we all have like different leadership roles, kind yeah. of. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's definitely a democracy. Hello, yeah. democracy. 
Yeah, yeah for sure. are. <laughs> when we started off at your table in a circle, I mean, I think we're all classroom teachers with a very share the facilitation handed off yeah. to each other. Um, just different, different um, personalities, different skill sets. And I think we as a group have our own personality. Yeah. 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 And I think that's so great that we are different because we bring different strengths and personality traits and we grow. I've grown a lot from each one of you a lot personally as a person and as a poet a lot yeah me too oh, thank you thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah. we really lo we really love each other and we really love each other's poetry so oh yeah that's right <laughs> that looked like a paramecium i'm sorry it didn't look at all like <laughs> so it's we look forward to it all week and we started doing it um on zoom even before covid because i yeah. went out to colorado and we kept it up. And so yeah. COVID, we just slipped right into, into doing it. So yeah. what a gift. Well, but, I, but go ahead. I just want to give a nod to Carolina for sparking the week without a chapbook. We need to do this. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. She took the lead with that. Yes, she did. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And I really yeah. didn't want to do it. Okay. <laughs> 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 rebellion. I pushed. Well, it's not bad. It's like, it's like. Mm -hmm. It was a great idea. I get, I eventually give over. I'm like the Gallegos. I have to say yeah, no. Yeah, you do. And then say yes. Yeah. I do. I'm always fine, but I always have to say no. I don't know. I apologize. I'm sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> you're not that oh. bad. We need I wore blue. blue. I wore blue. <laughs> I have we blue. Coincidence blue. or planned? <laughs> Definitely planned. Any more questions? Yeah, there's quite a few. Um, oh, oh. From Viviana, what were the motivations behind the collaboration? Fun. <laughs> For us. Camaraderie, intellectual companionship, friendship. Um, and we, we were, were pissed off about some things. Mm -hmm. Oh, quite pissed off. Continue yeah. on that. We're good at that. Yeah. Should, should we say that America's Rifle right is the first one, which is one that's obviously like one to be pissed off about? With, that was the first time right? it started everything was America yeah. right yeah right yeah it started motivation was political at first mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then we found that we really loved doing it which we didn't know we were going to so we just kept doing it in different ways so at first we, at first we just met to be together and write together but then it transformed into a collaborative process. Right. And then I, we were together, and then you became an abuela. Carolina. Oh, yeah. We were already abuelas. Then you became the abuela, and right. then you reached out to Nicole. So June was at June them was at them. Very, <laughs> early. very early. And it felt like a good thing to offer to a new mother, like, here's something besides taking care of the baby that you can do. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. then it became like a, a table and a floor blanket based workshop. It was fun. Yeah. So that's how the name came about. That's how the name came about. Yeah. yeah. Tres abuelas y una mamá. That's our name. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. 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 Um, and we sometimes wrote with June crawling around our on the yoga mats. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. she would nap in your guest bed, Maureen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, which is now here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we collaborate <laughs> with furniture yeah. too. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let me go to the question. <laughs> Wait, question, um, question. How long have you known each other? Oh wow, oh, Ooh. that's a good one. Um, when were you in? When were you in the MFA program, Nicole? No, like ten years ago, maybe. So I've known Maureen for ten years. Um, yeah, how, which we too know Maureen. Right. When I was writing my dissertation in the late 90s, I wrote Maureen asking her, because I was coming up with this theory that women's prose poetry was different than male prose poetry. And I wrote her and asked her about it. And she was very generous and wrote back and told me all this stuff and allowed me to quote her. And then, and then we just kept, <laughs> you were a great correspondent. We were correspondence yeah. friends for a while. Yeah. Yeah, we and did good. And you came to UNCA. I think that's when I met you in person. No, 
when you came to Miami, I'm like, I'll finally get to meet you because my kids are here. Ah, 2002. Yeah. 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 I met and you the rest in the restaurant in Lauderdale. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when I first met you. Giorgio's. Giorgio's on the intercoastal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I met Denise then, too. Yeah. And when, I met, neighbors. and when I met Holly, coincidentally, we were neighbors. Like, she lived in the same complex. So that was a big coincidence, too. That made it easy, easy to communicate. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to come back. <laughs> Same. Any more questions? Yeah. Um, this is a, oh, there's two of the Carol, Carol Lindsay and Yolanda. Yeah. Uh, um, both of them <laughs> asked, will there be a volume two? Will there be a Miss America two? Oh. Yeah. Well, maybe. Mr. America. Yes. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> <laughs> or Miss America. I don't. We've we've talked about it. We don't. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, I think that brings the questions. That was great. Yeah. Good that questions, great. everyone. Yeah, Those were wonderful questions. Question. Thank you all yeah. so much. Oh, looks at Jay Snodgrass put Mithier. Mithier. <laughs> <laughs> And thank you to Jay, Jay Snodgrass, too. I forgot to mention his name. Christine and Jay, yay. yay. And Lynn, and Hinka, oh, and Hinka, Hinka Press, and, and Books Christina. and Books. Ooh, and books and books. Books. Thank you so much. You guys are brilliant. Oh my gosh, it's such a pleasure to host you. And I'm so delighted that we were able to make this happen. You did so you great. Oh my God, honest. you did so great. I can't believe it. I can't believe how well it went. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you thank to you. our audience, which has been stupendous. Yeah. A lot of people here with us tonight. So can you tell us how many? I can't see from my side. Close you know? to 100. Oh yeah, Yay. thank you. Thank you. Wow. Which is remarkable. So for a Friday night when the heat are yeah. about to play. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right? Wow. Yeah. So thank you. I want to remind everyone, hit the green button. Purchase <laughs> a copy of the book. Please. Yes. Okay? And then we're going to see each other in person. We have a date in Miami sometime soon. 2021. I would say. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, good. Keep doing what you do so well together as Thank collaborators, you. as writers, as creators, as artists. And just know that we love you and appreciate you tremendously. Mm -hmm. And that I'm so glad that this could happen virtually, even if it can happen in person. So lots of love from Miami Book Fair, from Books and Books, from all of us at Books and Books. And uh, we will see you again. Until then, stay safe, stay connected, and vote. There you yes. go. Right? There yes. it is. Vote. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Love you, everybody. Yeah. Bye, I love you. Thank you all for coming. Thank, Thank you, my you. students. I saw some of my students came. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, so my much. students my too. Students. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Yay! Uh, and my mom. grandma, and my mother, and my sister, and my cousin, yeah, like, oh my my son, son, and my, my daughters, my daughters, and my CTS, and my partner, and everybody. Everybody. The more, the merrier. <laughs> we love you. Love Bye. you. Thank love you. you. Bye. Bye, Bye. ladies. Bye. Bye.